Hey everybody and welcome to our show, your hometown medical minute. I'm your host, Hal Brock. With me as always behind the cameras, our IT director, Mr. Ed Harrison. Hey everybody, how's it going today? Hey Ed, we've got a great show lined up for everybody today. We're actually gonna take a little trip down to the city of Paul's Valley and stop in at SPMG Valley Family Clinic. There we're going to talk to nurse practitioner and Oklahoma State Representative Cindy Rowe. We'll talk about her beginnings in healthcare and how she found her way down to Paul's Valley. Been here a little more than a decade serving the patients of Garvin County and then been a representative for a little over a couple of years and has accomplished quite a lot in her tenure at the Oklahoma Capitol. And so we'll talk a little bit about that as well about her practice down there in Paul's Valley as she continues to see patients alongside Dr. Susan Jones and Michelle Martin there at Valley Family Clinic. So, all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and head on down to Paul's Valley so we can meet up with Representative Cindy Rowe. All right, I want to welcome our guest, Representative Cindy Rowe here on our show today. Cindy, thank you so much for taking some time to be with us. Well, thank you, and thank you for asking me to be here. No, it's a abs pleasure. absolutely. Look, I've been waiting to do this for like, I think we got involved in Paul's Valley a little over a year ago, right. Southern Plains did. So how long have you been in healthcare? I graduated from nursing school in 1983. Okay. I worked as a registered nurse uh, for about 20 years, wow. not quite 20 years. I. Uh, I was from the Ponca City area. Okay. I worked at the hospital there for 20 years. Um, uh, about 16 years I was an ER nurse and about three plus years I was an intensive care nurse. Three, I finished my master's degree with the acute care nurse practitioner program in December of 99. Wow. Went, uh, went, back, <laughs> went back to school and got a post master certificate in the family practice, family nurse practitioner program so I could see kids. Kids, okay. And then um, that's what I've been doing ever since. Okay. Um, I've been in Paul's Valley 10 years. 10 years, wow, okay. Okay, so when did that passion for healthcare really first start? Did it come at an early age? Were you, are you a sibling or? You know, I'm, I'm the oldest actually. Okay. Um, I had wanted to be a nurse from the time I was a little girl. Oh, really? Okay. And uh, I can remember as a child going to the hospital with my mom and my grandma to visit somebody and I would be in awe, I mean absolute awe, when I would see a nurse in a white uniform with her white hat on. Yeah. And the physician that we went to as children had two nurses in his clinic. They were white every day with their white hats. And I just I just always thought, you know, that that they were up on this pedestal and sure. it's like I want to be like them when I grow up. When I got into high school, I was uh, in athletics. Uh, I was very big into basketball and I ran track. And um, that passion kind of took over. So when I actually graduated from high school and went to college, I was an education major for three years. Really? I was Thinking major. About I was. Okay. I was actually in the physical education as a phys physical education major, and that's what I wanted to do. And then when I was, a, I was a junior in college actually, and I just decided, you know, well, I was working as a nurse's aide in a nursing home okay. and in a, the hospital in Stillwater. And I just decided, you know, this is what I really want to do. I loved working in the nursing home. I loved the old people. I loved every mm -hmm. aspect of that. And um, I, just, I just decided this is what I really want to do. So I actually changed majors and ended up going to nursing wow. school after in school for three years to be a teacher. <laughs> okay, that's something that's a good phone call to the parents, right? right? Like, I'm hey, you know major. <laughs> and right. of course, you're also um, got into the politics side I did. recently. So, if you notice, we when I introduced her, it's representative. So, House of Representative District 42 yes, sir. is what you represent, and that's Garvin and McLean County. Yes, so, and so, man, what got you into politics? You know, you weren't busy enough, I right? <laughs> uh, you know, it's 
I, I, I can't put my finger on any one definite thing. It's always something I thought, well, that would be kind of cool to do. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lisa Billy had my seat for 16 years, yeah. and then Tim Downing um, was in the seat for two years, and he left and is now a U.S. attorney. Uh, and I would never have run against either of those two because I thought they did a phenomenal job. And uh, the timing was just never right because we had kids at home still. And then when I found out that uh, Tim Downing wasn't going to run again, I told my husband, I said, I really want to do this. Wow. Okay. So um, I did. Now, you had a couple bills, you yeah. know, the, this year. Can you, and I mean, I don't know how that works. Can you go into I can. That? So okay. um, I was the house author of two bills. Awesome. Um, uh, I, co I was the house author uh, with Senator Brenda Stanley on the bill that created a pathway to licensure for lay midwives. Yes. So, oh, you know, we point. have a lot of women who are choosing to have their children at home, which is their right to do that. For sure. And, you know, if you remember here uh, a year or so ago, we had a lot of publicity about some uh, home births gone bad. Yes. And we actually had seven or eight infants that died because of complications that weren't recognized in a timely fashion. And we created, uh, with this bill, a pathway to licensure for lay midwives. Many of these women have been delivering babies for 30 plus years. Right. Now, um, not every situation is ideal, and we recognize that fact. Um, we realize that there are some births that are higher risk, such as multiples, um, vaginal birth after a previous cesarean delivery, okay. Um, you know, chronic medical conditions in the mother. The bottom line is, if a woman chooses to have her baby at home, that is well within her right. That is right. a parental okay. rights issue, and she has the right to do that. The, the goal of this bill was to um, create a pathway for licensure for these lay midwives, and they actually were they were totally on board with this. They yeah, wanted to be able see. to to recognize what their training is, what what they can do, yes. so that these women know that you know what their training is, what their background is. They've gone through licensure with the state. These things have been verified, um, and you know within pieces of that legislation, you know they have to let them know you know what their risks are. They're still offered the same screening examinations that we do with uh, hospital type births. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I, I was surprised to learn that there's still a lot of women that don't even want any of the prenatal testing done. And uh, once again, um, that, that's not something we can force somebody to do. Right. Okay. So we just wanted to make it so that these women had options that we felt might be safer than what we have in place right now so that some of these births can, can go a little more smoothly. The one big thing that we, we wanted to ascertain was that there was an emergency plan so that if we see a woman that's getting into trouble, we, we know exactly ahead of time from the very beginning what the plan of action is going to be, where we're going to go, what steps are we going to Makes take, sense. how are we going to get there, where's the closest hospital, that kind of thing. So, you know, and, at... and governors did, did sign that, that bill. So awesome, it's, congratulations. Absolutely. So, and then I had one other bill that I was the house author of, okay. and it was a health care workplace violence, uh, that, is which big. is a, a big thing. Yes, it is. Uh, approximately 75% of workplace violence happens in health care. Um, we've had nurses uh, in this state that have been sexually assaulted. Yeah. We've had nurses that have had guns held to their head. We've had, um, you know, stuff from simple assault to more serious type assaults. And one of our metro hospitals alone la uh, last year had over 900 uh, cases of assault on a healthcare worker. Previously, um, uh, in state statute, the only people covered by this were first responders and emergency medical people. And what was crazy with that bill, and I'm not real sure how this went about, but they had the punishment upside down. So that somebody who committed a simple assault got a two-year sentence, and someone who, create, who, oh who did aggravated or aggravated with intent 
only got a year. So the punishment was upside down. So we fixed that. Okay. And the yeah. other thing that we did was we broadened the definition of healthcare provider Good. to not only emergency medical technicians, but we you know would include nurses, doctors, pharmacists, yeah. the lab tech, your x-ray tech, chaplains, hospital security. So it broadened the the definition of healthcare provider. And also, uh, there will be a sign posted that states that assaulting a healthcare provider uh, is, is a crime punishable by law. Yeah. So that maybe that, you know, if that could prevent even one healthcare assault okay. last year went through. Now, we did have another uh, piece of legislation that we passed. It was actually signed by the governor that was called the Riley Boatwright Act. Yes, okay. And, and it would, uh, and actually the governor signed this bill. Uh, I was a co-author, and um, this bill would, uh, schools would have to have an emergency plan in place. How, whatever that emergency plan is, what, you know, what uh, officials it involved, whether it was you know, local paramedics, EMTs, athletic trainers, a dad who's a physician, um, some sort of an emergency plan so that if there's a, you know, an accident or something on the field, then they know exactly what they're going to do, where they're going to go, and that kind of thing. You, know, you serve on a few committees. Um, can, can you talk about some of that? Do you I mind? do. I know. Okay, so cool. I am currently vice chair of the Public Health Committee. Oh, cool. Okay. I am also on the uh, Appropri Appropriations and Budget Health Subcommittee. Okay. And I'm also on Children, Youth, and Family Services and Long Term uh, Health Services and Long Term Care Committees. Wow. Awesome. So, um, I've done a lot of stuff with kids and elderly people, uh, foster care uh, type bills, uh, public health, uh, and I, I still take care of our nursing home patients. Oh, we wow. have Dr. Yes. Jones and I have about between 35 and 40 patients between three nursing homes that we see. So I keep up all the nursing home patients. I take all the nursing home phone calls and. Uh, do all the nursing home rounds and now that's had to kind of change a little bit too it because I mean when you yeah, it's a tough decision and yeah. um, but you know that ultimately the the safety of our, our elderly population because they're more at risk for the more severe complications yeah. and and uh, death um, but you know we've done really well um, our facilities have done a great job um, we've done some telehealth visits yes. in the nursing home rounds like uh, the last couple of visits I've done awesome uh have been telehealth uh, all right so Cindy again thank you so much we're gonna have to get back together um, over this next year and talk some more because I think everybody wants to know and it goes back to that education if you guys want any more information or if you need anything Southern Plains and Harbor Group we have clinics here in Paul's Valley Chickasha and over in Anadarko check out our website www.spmcmed.com or give us a call 405-224-8111 Southern Plains Medical Group, your hometown medical team in Oklahoma since 1950.